Hello and welcome. Um, I'm sure you must have been wondering where I've been to now. I've been here watching and observing events as they unfold in the polity. And uh, it's no doubt that Nigeria is at the precipice of total breakdown. And uh, a group of people have made their intention very clear. They have not pretended about it. They have not uh, missed to uh, words. Their actions are clear. And surprisingly, the rest of the people who are victims or who are their target are completely aware. But um, what has baffled me is if people know what these people, are what these people intentions are, why hasn't it stopped? Why is it still ongoing? Why are the killings still going on? Why are the intention, why is the intention to take Nigeria still going on? Why is why don't we have a change? So I'm going to tell us what is going on exactly. You see, those responding to the Fulanization and Islamization uh, agenda are responding in the very in the, in the wrong way. They are responding wrongly, and that is because they have been doing something that I've continuously said on this channel. You see, I have said repeatedly that. Western education is not equipped to understand the brand of Islamic politics that we are practicing in Nigeria. So if you are a Southern or a Christian that believe you understand the English language very well and therefore you can express yourself with jaw-breaking grandiloquence and you think because of that you suddenly possess some certain degree of intelligence that can explain a way what is happening in Nigeria, you are not, you, 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 you're you getting it wrong. Because the English language is, is an expression that expresses an idea. Just like the Doma language, the Igbo language, the Urubo language, and the Hausa language, the Funani language. It's just a means to express an idea. That is what the English language is. So, just because uh, a southerner can come and, you know, express like, uh, you know, uh, the current Nigerian polity, you know, transcends the undulating capitulation that, you know, surpasses a transmodial uh, event. And, uh, and because of that, we have to indulge some sort of cataclysmic catalyst. You see, when you, when you, when you speak like that and a son of caliphate listens to you, you only excite him and you, you, you become a, a form of amusement to him. They just look at you and they laugh. Shege, when the temple go and you are like, Shege, Kai, when the nyai are to renchi, Allah, Banza nyaruga, ma wawani. They acknowledge the fact that you can speak English in all forms of innuendos, but they acknowledge also that you are a fool. Because how can somebody be fighting a war with grammar? You're just fighting a war. Somebody is killing you. You come to TV station and you see uh, grammar. Grammar, 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 grammar. We have spoken too much of grammar in the South. We must first have some degree of understanding and proactive measures to safeguard ourselves. And what is the solution to this? It's a very, very simple thing. It's a thing also that I've been saying here over and over, over and over again. Let me tell you what is happening in the South. It's like if you, if you throw um, a chunk of bread to a chicken, of course, the chicken cannot swallow that bread. The chicken has, has to pieces the bread into tiny chunks and then it begins to pick each individual chunks to swallow. It's what they are doing to us. They come to the south region and they begin to pieces us. South-south, middle belt, Niger Delta, southeast, south that, this, that, 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 that. And then they begin to pick us one after the other. That is why you can have a crocodile tears in the so-called Niger Delta region, then the South East region will say, well, it is not our turn. Then when they are uh, executing Niger, um, crocod uh, what is it, Python dance in the uh, South East, the Niger Delta say, well, it is not our turn. So at what point will, will, will we continue? We will, co we will continue this way. I was listening to one interview sometime, and a very intelligent guy from the South, very intelligent guy, uh, Mr. Basik, he was addressing the issue. Clearly, he knows these people. He knows how they operate. But the mind of response is still individualized. Because he said he's representing the people of uh, uh, Midwest. 
and Midwest is 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 is, is Delta and Edo. Are you expecting the Igbo man in Delta State to follow Midwest when his brothers are in Abia and Anambra and uh, Enugu? It's not going to work. The idea that we can even feel comfortable to compartmentalize ourselves, to disintegrate ourselves, to separate ourselves, and feel comfortable about it still beats my imagination. In the face of what is happening today, in the face of a people determining, determined to pick us one after the other, it still beats me. That some people still have the liberty to think that the problem is the Igbo. No, instead of Igbo to control me, I'd rather the answer continue to control me. That people still have the ment that this mentality at this time still beats my imagination. I'm not going to talk about this love Igbo, don't love Igbo again because I have broken my teeth to say this thing. Because that is the solution. The Igbos are the, most, the, Igbos are the biggest resistance the caliphate has. So therefore, if the Igbos have the support of every other tribe in that place, case closed, we no longer have Islamization agenda. But in as much as we make this thing look as if it's it's an Igbo quest, it's an IPOB agenda, it's it's an Igbo, Igbo this thing alone, it's an Igbo fight alone, they will be picking us one by one and be doing whatever they want to do for us. Remember, Somebody from the north, a governor from the north said the oil in the south belongs to them. So it, it, it's funny. A people who contribute nothing control what you have and you still feel very, very comfortable about it. I feel so, so sad. Now, I've been holding this picture and some of you be wondering why am I holding this picture? I want to tell you that good luck, Ebele Jonathan, the immediate past president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I think opened the gateway to show me how very docile and stupid a lot of we Southerners are in the face of the, the might of the Fulani Caliphate. When Gulag Jonathan was there, a group of people from the Caliphate said they will make the government of this man ungovernable and they implemented it to the latter. Rather than for us, See the people, the real enemy, we channel all our energy attacking this man. A lot of us at, uh, occupied Nigeria, one million man march, one this, media, media hype against good luck is weak, good luck is everything weak. If you are a Sadhana and a Christian and you open your mouth to say this man, ah, good luck Jonathan, ah no, he was too weak. Ah no, good luck Jonathan did not understand the meaning of commander in chief. The mistake you think was that good luck, you thought good luck was commander in chief. Good luck has never been commander in chief of anything when he was president. Because you have a country where the setup and the constitution was has been arranged such that only a northern president can influence anything. So when you were blaming good luck, Jonathan, you were just exerting your energy at the wrong place. The, the, the cause, the reason now is now that you have a son of the caliphate in power. And things you things that motivated you, things that pricked you, things that nudged you to be responding and criticizing them. Ah, this thing, corruption, uh, killings, and the, those things that nudged you, that made you react then, are worse than it was then. Now, how come are you not responding now? It shows the greatest depth of hypocrisy that is in you. Because suddenly, you are settled and you are okay with what is happening. The same man that increased fuel by 10 naira and everybody went about occupying everywhere. Now the son of Caliphate came and increased that same thing that this man increased by 10 naira. He increased it five times over and not a single individual did pim. Instead, I say, ah, no, like some guys that I was with uh, somewhere in Abuja. No, it is long overdue. It's long overdue. Ah, now is the time we will see change. Ah, it's long. Complete hypocrisy. Let me tell you. That increment of fuel that a southern man increased by 10 naira and a Fulani man increased it by 5, it clearly shows the power of the Fulani ahead of everybody. It shows that for every Fulani man, a Fulani man has five times more relevance, relevant, uh, more, uh, five times more relevance than a southerner. That is clearly what it showed. That in this country, Nigeria, a Fulani man is five times more important, more relevant more superior than everybody in the South. That is what that thing showed. 
it clearly shows that when it becomes a southern president, we suddenly develop power. Where is Obi Ezekwe Sili? Where is Showare? Where is Wole Shoinka? Where are all those people? Where is Tunde Bakare? All those that occupied Nigeria that demonstrated against good luck Jonathan. Where are they today that things are worse? Everybody is quiet because the might and superiority and, uh, and dominance of the Fulani man is not in power. You dare not talk or you'll be killed. You had somebody who, had, who, who was human, who was willing to listen to you, who was lead, lead, willing to consider. When you demonstrated, he reduced the, the prices. You didn't... Oh my God. This is really... It, it, it's painful. It's, it's really, really painful. So until we from the south or Christians in Nigeria begin to reason outside ethnic division and begin to consider the importance of holding hands to form a huge block, a big chunk of bread that will be too big for the chicken to swallow. Or a big chunk of bread that will be too difficult for the chicken to, to, to beak into and break apart. We will continue to remain in divisive, docile southerners and Christian, susceptible to the divisive and dominant agenda of the caliphate. Take it or leave it. Whatever you are planning, whatever you are deliberating, so long as it is coming under the premise of divisive nomenclature of South South, Niger Delta, South East, South That, if it is not, if it doesn't have a unifying factor, we are not going anywhere. The only thing that scares the caliphate is that word unity. Try it. Once there is any means that unity is developing in the south, it will scare the south. So it, uh, it sorry, where, where, where there is any form of unity developing in the south, it will scare the caliphate. So until we begin to head our mind, not a Mr. Uh, Obaseki that I was calling to, to, to tell about the need for us to unite and stop this Igbo, we do this Igbo, we do that. The moment I mentioned Igbo, he switched off the phone. And I've been trying to get back, he refused to pick. Because I mentioned Igbo. It's it. And these are the people with a voice. These are the people people will listen to. These are the people with bigger channel to speak. But they are individualizing their fight. And until you make this fight an encompassing fight that unites everybody to a big block, we will keep fooling ourselves. How hard is this message difficult to get into your head? How hard is it difficult to understand? If you are watching this video and there's a way I can see Good Lord Jonathan, I want to give Good Lord Jonathan a hug for being the greatest president we have ever had. Take it or leave it. It's not my opinion, it's the fact. He's the greatest president we ever had. A man who remained calm in the sight, in the sight of betrayal, in the sight of hypocrisy, in the sight of outright hatred, in the sight of total blackmail, he remained calm and afforded his smile. A man who said, no single blood of Nigeria is worth his political ambition. That to me is the greatest human being you can ever have. So keep thinking the Igbo man is your problem or IPOB is your problem or uh, keep the individual, individualizing your fight. Thinking you can fight. I mean, it's a laugh to think that somebody is Projecting Midwest as a, a front for the caliphate, Edo and Delta. Cali it's a laugh. It's a, it's a laugh. By the way, I am still a proud Roboman. 100% Roboman. Unadulterated Roboman. Nobody can change me from that. But it's a higher intelligence, a higher understanding that is pushing me to understand that the only way we can form a formidable force is when I create alliances by my Igbo brothers so that we come together so that we become a big chunk of bread, a strong, impregnable chunk of bread that will be too strong for the fowl to scatter and eat. That is the only way we can win this battle. Thank you very much for listening.